Now I'd like to introduce to you a gentleman who knew Pete Carlesimo. He played for Pete Carlesimo, and I think he loved Pete Carlesimo. He graduated from the University of Scranton in 1953 and ultimately entered the executive search business. He is now the senior chairman of Hydric and Struggles. A few years back, he was named the recruiter of the century by his peers and his competitors. What praise that is to get that kind of recognition from your peers and your competitors. How do you get elected to this honor? You place more CEOs in American industry than any single executive recruiter in history. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming a former chair of the Board of Trustees here at the University, Jerry Roach. Jerry. This, uh, thank you, Pat. This thing about uh, executive recruiter of the century, I don't think there's that much to it. The century's only 11 years old. Uh, Pat, with all his due diligence, neglected to uh, mention two of my achievements that I'm very, very proud of. Uh, I happen to be the only graduate of the University of Scranton who suited up for four years of varsity football, and I still have four years of eligibility left. <laughs> Pat also told me to try to keep this reasonable in time. Uh, he probably heard another of my distinctions, about not another of my distinctions, that he failed to mention. I am the international chairman of the Society for the Protection of People Who Talk Too Much. <laughs> the name of the uh, society is on and on and on. <clears throat> I had about five different uh, openings that I was going to use, but uh, we decided at the last minute, uh, uh, Mark Carlissimo and myself, that uh, we would call an audible. Uh, there is an individual here tonight who deserves recognition, who hasn't gotten it so far, and we want to make sure it happens. And almost no one deserves it more. There is an individual here by the name of Vincent Carlissimo, who happens to be... <laughs> not yet, Vince, not yet. All right. Who happens to be Peter's brother, who turned 93 last week. And who was All-American when he played for Villanova. Now, Q, Vince, VJ, Vince, go. I'm really torn. Uh, Pat asked me to keep it brief, and I, I just can't resist my all-time favorite, or one of my all-time favorites. I have so many of Pete's stories, which happens to be a true story. It is not uh, a parable. Uh, the Letterman's Banquet in 1953 uh, was held at the Hotel Casey. And I would only say that just about everybody was there, the governor, the mayor, uh, the uh, provincial of the Jesuit order, uh, the Linet family, the, uh, the Chick Fellman, the uh, writer for the Tribune, Joe Butler, the writer for the Times. I mean, it was an awesome group, not unlike this one. And it was to celebrate the great year that the, uh, we, we had almost, if it weren't for the, uh, uh, Marines at Quantico, uh, we had almost a perfect year. Uh, now, we also had two very, very good quarterbacks, a guy named Bill Bartley, a nice Irish boy from Dunmore, and uh, Mike DeNoia, a nice Italian boy from, from uh, Carlos Simo's village down in uh, Newark. 
and there was some, some subliminal static going through the valley, uh, pushed by the media, I might add, that Pete seemed to play Denoya more than he played Bartley. And they let you infer what you could draw from that. But Pete got up at this buoyant, bubbly, effusive dinner that we were having where the spirits were high and not unlike this tonight again. And Pete grabbed the side of the podium like this and he stared out at the group. And he said, there's a dirty, rotten rumor going around this town and I'm here to stop it. It's vicious. The implication is that I played Denoya because he's Italian. That's a damn lie. I don't play Denoya because he's Italian. I play him because I'm Italian. <laughs> Father, Par, uh, Father Pilar's respected members of the clergy, fellow alumni, teammates, uh, fellow members of the university family, and especially the uh, Carlissimo family. I cannot begin to tell you the honor and the feeling that I have within me tonight. Uh, I, am, I am just thrilled at it all. I, uh, uh, Someone once said, when the, when the feelings are deepest, the words are hardest. And I certainly have a hard time. That's why I had five other openings that I could have used. And God bless VJ that uh, came in. But uh, this brief talk, Pat, is doomed to failure. There is no way, absolutely no way, that I can say all that's in my heart tonight not in five minutes, not in five days, not in five years. Someone also said that uh, uh, no day is done that makes a memory. And Pete Carlissimo has made one great deal of memories, particularly or especially for me. Uh, I just flat out love the guy. That's all there is to it. There's no other way to say it. There's no way we can do justice to his greatness. Uh, my father died when I was very young. Uh, we have a corporate psychologist in our organization who helps us evaluate candidates and helps us evaluate each other. And he had got to be pretty close and he started boring in on me and he came up with the conclusion that he said uh, somewhere along the way uh, you had some extraordinary male role models to take the place of your father. Uh, and uh, Pete didn't know that he was a big part of it, but what you see in front of me and what you heard Pat say in no small way is due directly to Pete Carlissimo. And I, uh, I, I, I just can't say enough about him. Yes, I can. <laughs> well, no, I can't. I can't, I can say more than I've said so far, and that is there's no question about he was a great coach. Uh, but that's the least of them. He was a phenomenal human being. He was especially a great father, a real role model. And Lucy, God bless your soul, Lucy, uh, I can still remember a sight of you out at Weston Field uh, while we were, we were, uh, practicing you there. And I think, uh, Lucy, you were driving a pretty snappy cattle, uh, uh, no, Buick at the time, is that right? But anyhow, Lucy there with the sun blowing through her beautiful golden hair and the mountains in the background and Weston Field and all its glory uh, was, uh, was something that had all the team looking at the scene and saying, this guy's got it all. But the coach was primarily not a coach, not to me especially, but coaching was not his prime claim to fame, claim to whatever. The coach was a teacher. And in my book, the noblest word in the English language 
is teacher. And you, and that includes a lot of you here tonight who are into teaching, you know that you touch eternity. The people you teach, teach people who teach people who teach people. And it goes on through generations, and you never know where it's all going to wash up on what shore. And uh, I would only say that, uh, that Pete, being a teacher, uh, <laughs> he didn't teach me how to play baseball, or uh, football, I'm sorry, he didn't teach me how to play baseball either. But uh, he, uh, he didn't teach me how to play football. This is what the Jesuits would call, as Father Pilars knows, he was confronted with invincible ignorance. Uh, I did my best, but uh, uh, he didn't uh, teach me how to make a living. He taught me how to make a full life. Because of him is uh, anything, because of him, uh, he has been an enormous contribution to me my, and the, hence my family and their family. His values, his character, his human sensitivity, his dedication, his focus, his courage, his courage. I'll never forget a quote of his one time. He, uh, as those who played for him know, he was manic about re knowing your plays. If you didn't know a play, you didn't play for him. And he said, there's no such thing as a coward. There's only people who don't know what to do. Boy, I have remembered that through life, and I found it, uh, find it to be uh, significant. I went in and went into the field and into the world of football with Pete, and I was in, went in looking for plays, patterns, uh, programs, positions, and I came out finding pride, perseverance, and passion. And Father promised to, I don't know a better man than Pete Carlissimo. You can say what you want to about anybody, but uh, I, uh, I, I just can't. He made me want to be a better man. Is there anything better you can say about anybody? He made me want to be a better man. This great man was with us. And thank you, Lucy, Lucy for sharing him with, with us and sharing your family with us and being part of one big family. And I want to thank you for Pete being with us tonight, and he sure is. Wise man has said that uh, uh, if you live in the if you live in the world of the Lord, you'll never see each other for the last time. And boy, I sure look forward to seeing Pete again, and know that I will. And I want to thank him for all he's done for everybody, the school, the sport world, the eternity that he's touched, and especially what he's done for this kid from Washburn Street. Okay, let's get out there and give him all we got. Thank you, Jerry, for your comments. It's amazing, to, for, it's amazing to me to hear the recruiter of the century say that our honoree tonight was the best man that you ever met. That, that is uh, incredible. Thank you.